is finished. Now that this thing is done, I'm gonna show you guys how I brought this John boat right here from zero to hero and exactly how much it cost. But before we do that, let's go over the boat itself. Right here in front of me, we have a 1955 Sears John boat. When I bought this thing, it was naked. It was by itself. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. The gentleman that was selling it was looking to only sell the boat itself, which he was asking a very, very reasonable price, but he also had a trailer that he was open to getting rid of, but didn't know if he wanted to. Seeked out the boat, quickly realized the boat was not gonna fit in the bed of my F-150, so I turned around and kind of negotiated with him, worked out a price, and bought the trailer with it. The trailer that it's sitting on is a 1976 Dilly boat trailer. Unfortunately, I found out later you know, in the build of this, this is not a deep V trailer or V hole for that matter. It is a flat bottom John boat trailer. Caused a lot of issues and we'll get to that. <laughs> but I did manage to make it work. So if you guys have never seen the making of this video, you might want to check out the first video I ever made, but I'll throw up some quick pictures. This boat originally looked like this and the trailer originally looked like this. I spent a ton of time on the trailer, probably more time than I wanted to, but the trailer is looking great. As you guys can see, there are new reflectors on it. I actually went ahead and bought Dilly stickers offline. That was actually pretty expensive, but I wanted it to look original, so we bought new Dilly stickers. This guy right here I wasn't super happy about because of how it was painted and the shape that it's in, but it has all the original information on the trailer from the serial number to the weight, to the wheel information, to pretty much everything you need to have this trailer be legal. So I was looking for ways to recreate that sticker, but unfortunately it ended up being way more headache than it was worth, so I just let it be. I taped over it when I painted it. It is what it is. The trailer needed a lot of things. It needed to be completely rewired. It needed new tail lights and running lights. So we went ahead and got those, as you guys know, in the video where I put them on. So I went ahead and put fresh tail lights and running lights on them, as you guys can see right here. We also got another Dilly sticker over here with more reflectors. Moving on into the boat, the boat when I bought it was originally blue, as you guys have seen already. And I went ahead and painted it a Rust-Oleum Smoke Gray. Now I was hesitant on doing so because I didn't know how it was gonna look like given the fact that I used spray paint cans. I wanted a shiny, clear, glossy look when I originally started this, but, but by the time I painted it with the spray paint cans, it kind of gave me like a matte gray look and I ended up really liking that. So as you guys can see right here, it's basically matte gray. And uh, you know, for spray paint cans, I think the paint job looks really good. Moving on into the interior, I went ahead and decked the whole thing out. And this is actually, you guys have never seen this before. This is completely new. I'm super happy with the way that this one came out because this was a project in itself and the interior is kind of what put the videos to a halt. Being that this is a 14 foot boat, I wanted it to be decked out so that we could fish out of it, but I also wanted to kind of keep it light. I didn't want to add too much weight to it and I didn't want to go ahead and start welding aluminum because I didn't really have the access to an aluminum welder, let alone Aluminum is not something that I'm capable of working with myself from a welding perspective. So my immediate goal was to use wood, but wood gets really heavy really quick. So as you guys can see right here, we have a rear deck and then we have a big front deck with a few compartments. I went ahead and I used three quarter inch plywood. I'll put pictures out here for you guys as we did it. Shout out to my dad. My dad helped me a lot with this. It was super important to have two hands in the making of doing this, having a second eye and having my father help me, especially since he's a lot more experienced than I am with like doing stuff like this. So what I did was I went to Home Depot and I bought one sheet of three quarter inch plywood. 
I don't know how I made it work, but I made it work. I was able to take one four by eight sheet and make the whole deck. Three quarter inch plywood, especially right now in the world, is not cheap. So I was able to do it with one piece, but you gotta make sure you guys are careful because I pretty much had one opportunity to do the whole deck. If I screwed it up, I would have had to buy a completely new sheet of plywood. So with that being said, this boat is divided up into one, two, three, four, five, six different deck pieces. Now I know that kind of seems crazy, but I did that purposely so that I could get the most maximum use out of the boat without having to do a ton of framework. So what I did here was I used the benches to the best of my ability as framework and it ended up really doing me well. So as you guys can see right here, this is just a piece of plywood that we screwed directly into the bench. We left space on each bench like about two inches so that the next piece of wood can be supported on one side by the bench. In the back, I wanted the rear to be open so that I could put stuff in there like a battery, a gas tank, as you guys can see, I know I have an engine on it, things like that. And I need to access the plug. So what I did was I put these little pieces of carpet basically on here. I just screwed them into the bottom. I put these in there so I could grab this and detach everything. Underneath here, I have storage gas tank, gas line to the engine, anchor. I left a space right here for the battery if I wanted to. Now, as you guys will see in here, I do have restaurant mat flooring, or I call it restaurant mat flooring. It's basically just a rubber mat. I did this so that the bottom of the boat wouldn't get damaged and it would also keep the stuff from sliding around a ton when we're like driving around and things like that. So that's that. In the rear, we did do a little bit of framework and this was literally the lightest way I could think of doing it. And uh, so what my dad and I did was we cut two by fours to the length of the back of the boat and we ran a second support into the transom. We put it into the transom just to stay snug and essentially what that allows us to do on each side is take this piece of three quarter inch plywood, support it back here so that you can stand on it and then we left about an inch and a half, two inches of bench so that the rear piece of the board could be supported. So all you gotta do is take this guy, slide it forward, tuck it onto those pieces like so, and close her tight. Boom, she's closed. We also left a decent amount of space in the back so that we could run wires or in this case, the gas hose. So you can see that right there, there's a little gap. So this guy can stick out and we can still kind of access it. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, why did you not put a hinge on here? Why do you not have a way to lock this thing in? Is, is, is that weird? Maybe some of you guys are asking questions about if the wood stays there when I drive around and stuff. It's solid. I screwed this piece in so that it keeps this from sliding. And back here, the way that the boat is shaped, it actually does not allow it to come straight up. You have to slide it out. So if, if you see right here, like if I really wanted to, I can't even pull this up. It's just kind of snugged in there. So the only way to actually get that off is to pull that out. So that's what we did for the rear of the boat. Three quarter inch plywood, very, very minimal framing. So we saved on weight and you still have a casting deck. Now moving up to the front here. So just like the rear of the boat, we split everything up into multiple pieces and I'm going to show you why I did that. So up here, we had to kind of trim around these supports for the side of the boat, as you guys can see right here. So this guy, we just snugged in here, screwed it down. Again, we went directly into the bench. So that is just solid. That's just blank casting deck. Here, what I did was I put a tackle compartment. I don't have anything in it yet. I specifically measured my plano boxes in width and height so that I could have a perfect tackle tray. Again, we put carpet right here. So if you pull this up, boom. So if you guys see in here, we got ourselves a nice tackle storage area, or I don't know, I guess you could put a live well in there, whatever the heck you feel like. Now in the middle, we put another support. As you guys can see right here, it is painted, but we took two by fours and we created a support in the shape of the bottom of the boat. All this is is a two by four up here. It doesn't go any further. It's just a two by four with a couple other pegged in there. And yeah, that's how we got that support. Left two inches of bench right here for the front support of this piece of wood. What's also cool is we were able to eliminate weight on the hinge that we put in 
by making this wide enough so that it bottoms out on the edge of the boat. So there's not direct pressure on the hinge itself. It's actually supported right here when you open it all the way. So you don't got to worry about it like slamming down and having other issues like that. So again, put more rubber mats so stuff doesn't, you know, like move around. I actually got to trim that one a little bit better, but you guys get the gist. So this guy goes like this, boom perfectly set i can't remember the exact hinge that we used but it's essentially just a piano hinge like a forever hinge or something i don't really remember if I, i'll leave it in the description below when i do come on it but what we did here was we slit into the carpet when we put the carpet on and we hid the main frame of the hinge inside the carpet and then just put screws over top of it so it's not the cleanest thing ever, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. I'm not complaining about it. So that's how I ended up getting my tackle storage. I really wanted that. In my other John boat, I did not have that, so that was super important to me. So moving up in the boat, I'm gonna have to make some quick adjustments so I can show you guys how this works. Um, just give me one second here. Okay, I had to open the trolling motor for this just because I'm gonna end up hitting it with the camera if I don't do it. Moving into the front of the boat, we have the main casting deck. And uh, this guy was very hard to cut. It took a lot of time to get this perfect, but we ended up getting it pretty good. If you guys are wondering how we did the whole casting deck, we pretty much just took big pieces of cardboard, traced it the best we could. We were able to make kind of like perfectly fitted pieces of cardboard. And then what we did was we traced those on the wood and transferred them and cut them out with a saw. So what's nice was we used a double-sided hinge so that it could open either way. Now, instead of putting it directly into the frame, I put it into the next piece of three quarter inch plywood so that it would act as two different compartments. So if you guys look up here, I separated it from the bow, which I'll show you guys that in a second. But if you grab right here, it lifts right up and we have a second compartment. So you guys can see in there, I have like my life jacket, my, you know, pretty much everything you need to be legal for the most part on the water. So yeah, boom, this is the second piece completely hinged in. As you guys can see right there, we have the old bench seat using the majority of that as a support. I mean, I just wanted a way that I could create maximum storage and I felt like this was the easiest way to do it while at the same time not adding a ton of weight to the boat. So if we move up from that, you have a triangle piece of wood, which I'll pull out for you guys. I made this separate on purpose as well so that I could have more storage for the most part. I wanted bow storage for maybe an anchor up here, maybe batteries, electronics, or most importantly for me, a camera bag. I wanted to find the driest spot in the boat where I could put things like cameras and stuff like that when it rains. So this was my idea for that. We have simple framing right here with two by fours that are cut in the shape of a triangle so that I could have a fitted piece so we can run whatever we need in there. I mean, you guys get the point. It's, it's made like that so I can do whatever I want with it. It's simple. All you gotta do is slide this in here. It locks in there really well. We made sure everything was fitted so it doesn't bounce out when we drive. In the front, I left space open so that we can run wires through there to a battery for the trolling motor or the fish finder that I'm going to be installing in the bow of the boat. From there, you're probably wondering what this guy is right here. I permanently installed a piece of four x four block so that it could raise my trolling motor support. This trolling motor is a lot heavier than I imagined. I didn't intend to get a trolling motor that was this heavy. It just happened that way. Um, I bought everything used for this boat. I didn't get to choose. So I was trying to save money, trying to make everything work. I love the trolling motor, but the darn thing was heavy. So it needed a support for the front of the boat. So I got this. So essentially what I did here was I installed to this piece a four x four block. We carpeted it just so it would kind of look like it matched. And then Minn Kota sells this mount right here on Amazon or wherever. And what's cool about it is if it's in the way when you're fishing or whatever, all you gotta do is pull that pin out, drop it down and it locks like that. Or you can actually completely take it off the plate if you want to. So that's what that's doing there. So yeah, that's it. That's the interior. Other than all that, I went with outdoor carpet, marine carpet. I was able to get this carpet at my local Home Depot. It was really cheap. I wanted to do a crazy like EVA foam on the interior. But when I started looking at pricing, it just was not logical. Plus, 
the carpet. I ended up using it for other things. One thing that I left out about the exterior, I just happened to have Alumacraft stickers from an old John boat that I never used. And it was really bugging me that the outside just didn't have anything on it. I don't know why, I'm not like a big decal guy, but I just wanted it to be congruent with having the registration numbers up front in black. I wanted something to even it out in the rear. So I had this black Alumacraft sticker and I went with it. I like it, looks good. As you guys can see, I tried to stick with the theme of being black and gray. I thought it looked really good. I thought it looked slick. So I painted the trailer completely black. I got black fenders. I blacked out the wheels on the tires. And uh, I think it looks really good. I'm really happy with the way it came out. So let's talk about propulsion. I got this motor on the back. It's a five horsepower Mercury engine. I bought this from a buddy of mine, very thankful that he just had it sitting in the garage and he wanted somebody to use it. So I bought that off of him. It did need a little bit of TLC, but we got it running and it's good to go. It works. I haven't used it that much, but it works. So it's a 2001 or 2002 Mercury 5 horsepower two stroke with tiller throttle control. I think that's right. I've never owned a tiller boat before, so that's kind of interesting. In the front here, I have a Minn Kota Maximum, or Maxim. I thought it was a Minn Kota Edge, but apparently the dude advertised it wrong, or is it? Yeah, it's a Minn Kota Maxim. I thought it was a Minn Kota Edge. Hmm. Well, see, you don't always know everything that you purchase. I just realized that now. Well, in the front of the boat, I have a Minn Kota Maxim and uh, I bought that off some random guy on Facebook Marketplace. It has the foot pedal control, which I currently have up here on the bow. So that's really hype. We got a nice foot pedal control right there. You know, pick it up, put it down. You guys know how it works. So this is a 55 pound thrust Minn Kota. This boat scoots, guys. A 55 pounder on a 14 foot V-Haul boat. This sucker scoots. It's actually sweet. So I'm really hyped about that. So yeah, there you have it. That's it, that's pretty much it. There's nothing to it. Uh, if you guys are wondering, eventually I'm going to put a Garmin on the front. I actually have it inside for my other John boat. Um, it's like a $150 depth finder. It's nothing crazy. It's not like live scope or anything like that. So I'm really happy with the turnout. Everything looks really good. Honestly, I'm super stoked on it. It's the first project I ever really tackled like to a full extent. Um, I've never done anything like this. A lot of you guys were commenting in the other videos like, oh man, you're so lucky that like, you know how to build things and refurbish things and fix things. And I really don't, I'll be honest with you. My dad is a handyman for sure. But like, this was a project that I just started scouring YouTube for advice and uh, was able to do this. But now that we're done going over the boat itself, let's talk about the one thing everybody's probably curious because I've yet to mention it in this whole video series is how much did I pay for this and how much did it cost me said and done? So let's talk about the budget on this boat, exactly how much it cost me to do everything, what went right, what went wrong, etc. Walking in to this whole build, my budget that I wanted to spend was no more than $1,500. Yes, $1,500. Right off the bat, this kind of seemed unrealistic and I didn't actually know if I could pull it off. Although I might be really good at budget building things because I've done it in the past. This was a long shot to be able to make what I really wanted come to life. To give you guys a quick background on why I started building this boat or why I even wanted this boat build was because there is a pretty good amount of lakes in my area, but they have limited horsepower and limited size. Some of the lakes you can only have up to a nine horsepower boat, and some of them are all electric, so you can only take electric John boats on them. Now this was a huge thing for me because the boat that I currently have is a 21 foot fiberglass nitro with a 150 horsepower engine. So I pretty much was very limited to where I could go. I had maybe three lakes that I was logically able to fish or legally able to fish with the current boat that I had. So I wanted to be able to create a John boat that could get me on the water, would kind of keep me safe, but would also allow me to fish new bodies of water. So that was the inspiration behind this John boat right here. I wanted a flat bottom, but I could not find one. Everybody wants ridiculous prices for flat bottom John boats. So I was just kind of just scouring through Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace for a good deal. I woke up one morning on Facebook Marketplace, I found this John boat, 
The guy told me if I was the first one to get there, I could buy it. He, he just wanted money. He wanted money in hand. He didn't care who it went to. I negotiated with him for both the boat and the trailer in this condition. I bought it for $800. I felt like that was pretty good. You know, to get a boat and a trailer for under a thousand bucks was insane. I really wasn't entirely 100% if it was gonna be a good move or not, but something was just telling me, hey dude, send it, and I took it home that day. I was concerned because I just spent $800 with the fact that I just lost my job a week before I bought this boat, and on top of that, it's a 1955. So I completely took the dude's word for it, that this is a good boat, that it floats, it doesn't leak. And uh, I took money that I did not have and sent it. So I felt really confident that, hey, if I gotta sell my big boat, whatever, at least I can buy this in cash and have a boat to still go fishing. Or worst case, if I find a job and I don't want this thing, I'll just turn around and flip it, right? Like I'll fix it up and sell it, make, make my money back or something like that, right? Right off the bat, like I told you guys, the boat and the trailer costed me $800. Then with all the sanding material for completely stripping the trailer and the paint, those sanding discs that I used on the grinder cost me $50. All the new trailer wiring and lights I bought on Amazon for fairly cheap, that was $40. Then from there, I had to get wiring clips to install the wires, so that costed me $10. And from there, I bought a spray paint like gun thing it was basically like a little plastic piece that you mounted onto the spray paint can, and that was $5 at Ace Hardware. From there, all together, the hardware, spray paint, sandpaper, and JB Weld costed me $228. From there, I had to buy trailer grease caps to put on the axle of the trailer because it was spewing grease everywhere. Those were eight bucks on Amazon. The wood to do all the interior was $60. The carpet, for the interior altogether, I bought two uh, sheets of like eight by 16, I think, pieces of carpet, if I can remember correctly. Um, that only cost me 30 bucks. It was super cheap. I had to buy stickers. That was $16. And then we have the Mercury engine. I bought that for 200 bucks. And then the trolling motor up front, I bought for $130. Batteries to power it and stuff like that, I already owned because I have another John boat, so I just transfer that. So that brought me to a whopping total of $1,577. That's pretty good. I know what you guys are thinking, you know, hey, $77 over budget. Off the bat, I was like really ecstatic, guys. $77 over the budget, give or take, I bought a boat, a trailer, basically two engines for it, and have a mini bass boat. For 1500 bucks, for the most part, that's insane. I was like super, super pumped about this. I wasn't mad that I went over budget because as I thought about it and started building this thing, I thought for sure I was just gonna be like, <laughs> I thought I was gonna be like close to three grand in the hole because like what stuff is selling for nowadays, like like boat motors and stuff like that is, it's not cheap. So, so I thought, keyword thought, I would spend that amount of money, I'd be good to go, I'd be happy, and I was gonna make this video and uh, it was gonna be out a lot earlier than it was, but then this happened. When I finished the boat, I took it out to a lake for a big grand finale video. The idea was to go out there, show off the boat, it'd be the first time I'm firing up the engine and taking it out there, be the first time fishing in it. Um, you know, I just had this big plan for it. Sometimes uh, things don't go as planned and I took it out to a lake with my good friend Tony and in the process of doing that, literally everything went wrong. So from there, it ended up costing me significantly more than I planned. So although this should have been a $1,500 or $1,577 boat build, it no longer was after this trip. To make a long story short for you guys, on the ride out there, rookie mistake, should have checked this stuff, but because I drove it around prior and throughout the building process, I just didn't think about it. On the way to driving to the lake, we blew a trailer bearing. So I figured, ah, blue bearing, whatever. We get some new bearings, we re rebuild the bearings, and we're good to go. For those of you who want some kind of like painted picture, on the axle, you have a hub. The hub is what holds your tire on, like this. And inside that hub, you have bearings, which allow your wheel to spin on the axle. What happened was on the right side, it blew out. Not really bad, it just got to the point where it made the trailer have speed wobbles. So unfortunately, I'm about 
45 minutes from home and uh, we were pretty much at the lake by the time the bearing blew so we, we went ahead and we got out there and you know we, we, we fished and I did make a video but everything just went downhill so what did we do? We took it home, we had no choice, I wasn't about to tow it, it was drivable, I just couldn't go over like 55 miles an hour without getting like death wobbles out of the trailer. So it was already bad enough that the bearing blew but then on the way home we had another catastrophe, the right fender just friggin flung off and disappeared. So I lost the fender and then in return to coming home I had to take care of this scenario. We had a lot of issues with this whole ordeal and uh, it ended up getting really expensive. So what I ended up having to tack on to the cost of this boat was several different things. So I had to get new bearings all the way around. The fenders, I no longer had two of them so I just went ahead and got new fenders. And then in the process of figuring all that stuff out, took it for a test run and the wheels were still getting speed wobbles. Turns out when the bearing blew, the play in the tires caused the physical rim on the tire to bend. So I had to buy two new tires and rims for each side. After all that, as if it wasn't bad enough, I fixed it all, we were good to go, but the boat was not handling the weight of, or, or the weight distribution of everything because of it being a flat bottom boat trailer. So what I had to do was I had to redesign the trailer and re-engineer the trailer with four different bunks underneath so that it would properly hold the V-Haul of the boat. So price down from all that nonsense ended up costing me $24 for bearings, $75 for wheels and tires, $42 for bearings, and uh, $58, I rounded up to 60 for the support that held the trolling motor on because it got all flimsy. And uh, then I just had a random receipt from Ace Hardware in the process of all that for $38. So I just called that miscellaneous. Tacking that on to the $1,577, we are at $1,816. So not terrible, not what I wanted, not terrible, but this whole entire boat build cost me we're just gonna say 1800 bucks. Some of you guys are probably gonna be like, dude, are you serious? You spent 1800 and you got a full boat with an engine and everything? I know, I know. Uh, I'm being a stick stickler on myself. I'm not mad about it. Um, I was just shooting for a budget and I kind of screwed it up based to my user error. I should have checked those bearings. It would have saved me a lot of money, but hey, you live and you learn. The boat came out sick. I'll be honest with you, I did a really good job. I'm not, <laughs> like I've never done anything like this before. So I, did, I think I did a good job. If you look at the before and the after picture of these boats, it's it's insane. I can't believe the turnaround. I, I think this whole project took me around two weeks to do, if you actually consider it. It took a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears for, for the most part. It, it took a lot of work, and uh, I probably couldn't have done it without the help of my father, so shout out to him for that. And uh, you know, I hope this inspires you guys to get out there and make a cool boat. I'm just an average guy with a YouTube channel, and I really wanted to make basically something come from zero to hero. And it feels really good that I was able to do it um, with limited tools and with whatever common knowledge I've had just from fishing over the years and owning miscellaneous boats. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the little boat series. I'm sorry it took so long. Tomorrow we're gonna be getting out and trying to put the first muskie of the year in this boat. So I hope you guys are excited for that. And uh, hey, if you're new here, do me a favor, smash the subscribe button. If you guys have any further questions about costs, or things with this boat, just leave a comment down below and uh, I'll make sure I answer you. A at the end here, I'm, I'm gonna play some, some videos of us driving this boat on the water because we did take it out to test out the engine. So I think you guys will get a kick out of that. But uh, I'll see you later.